So, good morning and welcome back to this NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. In the last few lectures uh, we have been discussing about uh, total synthesis of natural products having four membered ring. So, now in the next few lectures we will focus on natural products having five member five member rings so when you talk about five member rings there are two classes of natural products which should come to your mind immediately so one is uh, prostaglandins the other one is triquinine based natural products so first let us start with uh, prostaglandins uh, prostaglandins they were well known and during 1960s and then 70s got lot of attraction from synthetic chemists to develop new methodology for the synthesis of uh, all the prostaglandins. The prostaglandins as you can see has uh, a cyclopentane as a, has a cyclopentane with two side chains ok, two side chains. So, this is the core structure of prostaglandin which we can call it as prostonic acid ok, that is the core structure. So, most of these prostaglandins were discovered and reported in early 30s by von Euler and of course, it was not easy to elucidate the structure of all these prostaglandins. It took about uh, th more than 35 years to elucidate the correct structure of prostaglandin ok. And once the correct structure of prostaglandins were identified then lot of action take took place from synthetic chemist to synthesize this compound and I will at least talk about two total synthesis of prostaglandins one by E.J. Corre uh, Nobel laureate and other by Gilbert Stark ok. So, if you look at this closely, so they are all carbocyclic oxygenated C20 molecules ok and in addition they have two side chains ok. So, one having carboxylic acid at the terminal the other one is having methyl group ok. And how do you classify prostaglandins and how do you name it ok. It depends on the number of different functional groups present in the molecule. The basic structure is same cyclopentane with two side chains ok. When you want to classify it was based on two things one the functionalities present in the five membered ring ok. What are the functional groups present and how they they are present ok. What is what is their relationship and the second one depends on the number of unsaturation number of unsaturation present in the two side chains ok. Let us directly go into the nomenclature. So, normally when you talk about prostaglandins they write PG, PG as the first two letters. So, the PG represents prostoglandin, PG means it is prostoglandin. Then you see PGA, PGB, PGC, PGE, PGF. What are these additional letter A, B, C, D, E ok? PGA, PGB, PGC all of them have cyclopentenone ok. You can see this 5 membered ring is in the form of cyclopentino. Well, but the double bond position changes from A to B to C. When you go from A to B to C, you can see the position of the double bond also migrates. One is alpha beta unsaturated ketone, then beta gamma unsaturated ketone. The other one is also alpha beta unsaturated ketone, but there are no chiral centers. These two are no chiral centers is a tetra substituted com ok. So, first one is alpha beta unsaturated ketone, but it is di substituted double bond is di substituted. Whereas, the second one it is tri substituted and third one it is tetra substituted. So, they are called PGA, PGB, PGC ok. All of them as you can see have one double bond, but the position of the double bond gives their name. Then what is D and E? Here the double bond 
the double bond is replaced. You do not have double bond, instead you have a hydroxyl group. Okay. And the hydroxyl group also it is beta hydroxy, beta hydroxy means it is like aldol, okay. beta hydroxy ketone. So, if the ketone is here and the hydroxyl is there then it is PGD and if it is opposite then this is called PGE. Okay. PGA, PGB, PGC have cyclopentenone, PGD and PGE have one hydroxyl and one ketone, we can call it as hydroxy beta hydroxy ketone or aldol in the cyclopentane ring. Still the two side chain are intact. Okay. Now we will come to the last category that is PGF. What is PGF? Here the ketone which was present in PGD and PGE they are reduced or in other words you have two hydroxyl groups in the cyclopentane ring they are called PGF and you also see when you when you read literature you will see PGF alpha PGF beta what does it mean that means the ketone which you reduced okay here if it is alpha the stereochemistry is alpha then you write PGF alpha if it is beta then you write PGF beta okay so that is how the names are given for prostaglandins then you also see PGF 1 alpha, PGF 2 alpha. What does it 1 and 2 mean? So that means the side chain, you have two side chains, it depends on the number of double bonds present in the side chain. Okay. If they write 2 alpha, that means the side chains have two double bonds. If they write 1 alpha that means it has only one side chain. Okay. So, this is about uh, the nomenclature of prostaglandin. So, now let us see what are the challenges these molecules provided for synthetic chemists to make this compound. And if you look at the PGF series, the PGF series have 5 chiral centers. Okay. PGF have 5 chiral centers, 4 in the ring, 4 in the ring and 1 in the side chain. I will come to that later, but 4 in the ring, 1 in the chiral center and the 4 in the ring they are contiguous, 4 contiguous chiral centers are present in prostaglandin. Then the hydroxyl group which is present in the side chain, it is little far away from the four chiral centers present in cyclopentane. So that means sometimes it will be difficult to use the four chiral centers present in the cyclopentane to direct the hydroxyl group or introduction of hydroxyl group at C50. Then when you look at the side chain, one side chain has cis double bond, the other side chain has trans double bond. Okay. One side chain has cis double bond, other side chain has trans double bond. And the prostaglandins D and E have beta hydroxy ketone that is aldol. Okay. Once you have this aldol as you know they are slightly unstable when you treat that with acid or base. Okay. So one should be extremely careful when you reach that stage you should not use acid or base. Okay. And because you have beta hydroxy ketone and diol and trials. So, the synthetic strategy should have proper protecting groups and also you should also have orthogonal protecting groups. Your two different protecting groups should be introduced and cleaved at different times. Okay. So, these are the synthetic challenges one could expect while talking about total synthesis of prostaglandins. So, as I said there are quite a few total synthesis, but the first total synthesis was reported from Professor Corey's laboratory. Still, even today, that synthesis is considered under one of the best synthesis of prostaglandins. Their retrosynthesis is based on few key reactions. First of all, is basic idea is 
he called it as bicycloheptane approach. That means he starts from this bicyclo 2 2 1 system, bicyclo 2 2 1 system having a CH2 X here. Okay. Now, what he does, what he wants to do is you cleave this bond. Okay. When you cleave this bond, that should get converted into a nicely cyclopentadiene, cyclopentane, and these two side chain. Okay, you can see one and two. Two side chains can be easily introduced. Okay, so this becomes one side chain, and this becomes side chain two. So, what is important is you have to cleave this bond. Okay, the cleaving that bond is very very important, and how you cleave accordingly, you can fix the stereo centers of these three contiguous carpets. That was his plan. Okay. The whole thing involved three key reactions, one Diels-Alder reaction, two Bayer-Williger oxidation and third one iodo lactronization These are the three key reactions which he used to synthesize prostaglandins. Okay. Let us see his uh, retrosynthesis. So, when you look at this molecule uh, here uh, for example, we start with PGF 2 alpha. Okay. So, 2 alpha that means uh, 2 double bonds are there is not it and alpha this hydroxyl is alpha okay, PGF. His first retrosynthesis is to disconnect the cis double bond. Okay. If you disconnect the cis double bond then what you should get is so this is the Wittig reagent the other portion other portion this should be aldehyde is not it this should be aldehyde that aldehyde the hydroxyl group immediately will cyclize to form lactol okay or in other words if you have this lactol then one can do a Wittig reaction to get this compound but before that you have to protect the hydroxyl group. Here yeah, the hydroxyl group is protected as THP ether that is tetrahydropyranyl ether. Okay. Now the lactol can be obtained, the lactol can be obtained by dibol reduction of this lactone and if you have this aldehyde, this double bond can be obtained from this aldehyde by Wadsworth Immons modification. Okay. So, this is very easy and that also will give you trans double bond. A simple Wittig will give cis double bond and this Wadsworth Immons modification will give you the trans double bond. Okay. The next step is how to get this bicyclic aldehyde, bicyclic aldehyde. Okay. So, the aldehyde of course can be used as protected form of the primary alcohol. Then this lactone, 5 membered lactone. So, whenever you want to synthesize a 5 membered lactone, again one reaction which should come to your mind is iodo lactonization. Iodo lactonization. That means if you have a double bond and if you have a carboxylic acid, if you treat with iodine or potassium iodide in the presence of sodium bicarbonate, first iodonium ion will form here followed by attack of this carboxylate, it will open up the iodonium ion to give iodolactone. That iodine can be easily removed with tributyl tin hydride. Okay. So, what you need is this double bond and then carboxylic acid. Depending on the ring size, you can have this either CH2 or CH2M. Okay. Normally 5 membered and 6 membered work very well. This how will you get it? Okay, if you look at here the advantage is, is very creative. This carboxylic acid and this hydroxyl group, this carboxylic acid and hydroxyl group, if you connect it, if you connect it, then that will give you this 7 membered lactone. Okay. What you have done, this CH2 COH you are connecting with this one. Okay. Now, how will you get this lactone? 
what are the reactions we know to get lactone one of the simplest and straightforward reaction to get lactone is to get from carboxylic acid and alcohol but that is what we want here okay but this lactone one can get it from bayer williger oxidation if you do a bayer williger oxidation of this ketone that will give you this 6 over lactone okay and this as soon as you look at this molecule you can see a cyclohexene okay you can see a cyclohexene so cyclohexene again next very important reaction which should come to our mind is diel salter reaction that in principle should give you the diene and the ketene equivalent as you know ketene cannot be used in diel salter reaction as dienophile because ketene undergoes dimerization they are unstable so normally people use ketene equivalents either nitro ethylene or alpha chloro alkylone nitrile so this is called ketene equivalent okay one can use ketene equivalent to get the corresponding ketone okay now let us see the synthesis so for the synthesis first he started from cyclopentadiene okay cyclopentadiene and when you treat to sodium hydride you know it can generate anion when right? cyclopentadiene and anion is aromatic isn't it so you can easily generate anion now quench with methoxy methyl chloride that is ch3 methoxy methyl chloride is ch3 o ch2 cl so this is the leaving group okay then this will attack here and your chloride goes once the chloride goes what you get is ch2 o me okay this is what you need here there is one small problem the problem is so this is this is a cyclopentadiene okay once you have cyclopentadiene it can undergo various 1 5 hydrogen shift okay so if you are doing this reaction above 0 degrees above 0 degrees it can undergo 1 5 hydrogen shift to form these two dienes also okay so that means not only while making this compound one should do the reaction below 0 degree and remove the solvent also below 0 0 degree but also when you do the diel salt reaction you should do below 0 degrees so those days as you know the diel salt reactions were done at high temperature you know either in sealed tube or reflexing in benzene or reflexing in toluene and so on so now if you have to use this diene this particular diene without isomerizing to other two dienes via 1 5 hydrogen shift the next step that is the diel salt reaction should be done at 0 degrees or less so what he did he took this compound and then treated with alpha chloroacrylonitrile in the presence of copper fluoroborate the copper fluoroborate helps to do this reaction at very low temperature you can do it sub zero and when you do that you get the corresponding pi cyclo 2 to 1 adduct pi cyclo 2 to 1 adduct so now you got this chloroacrylonitrile adduct as you know this is a synthetic equivalent of ketene so next step is the hydrolysis of the acrylonitrile adduct to get corresponding keto okay so as we have seen in the retrosynthesis we could successfully make this bicyclo 2221 keto okay the next step is to carry out bayer williger oxidation so when you use mcpba okay when you use mcpba there are two possibilities one it can epoxidize the double bond two it can undergo bayer williger oxidation so between these two bayer williger oxidation takes place because if you look at this double bond the ch2ome is just above the double bond and that protects the double bond from attack by mcpb okay so that's how when you do 
the bare willigan oxidation of this ketone with one equivalent of MCBBA you get this bicyclic 3, 2, 1 lactone. Okay. Then obviously next step is open this up to get the corresponding hydroxy carboxylic acid. So that is very easily done by alkaline sodium, sorry, sodium hydroxide. So now you got the hydroxy carboxylic acid. The important feature of this reaction is these two C, C, C bond and CO bond they are cis to each other, they are cis to each other. So same thing you can maintain. Whereas if you look at the CH2OME, this is opposite to opposite to this CH2. So that way you can see this is beta whereas these two are alpha. So the stereochemistry also is correctly fixed. Though it is racemic, but relatively if you see they are trans to each other. Okay. So now you have the hydroxy carboxylic acid. The next step is the iodolactonization. So the iodolactonization can be done by treating with potassium iodide and sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate remove the hydrogen of carboxylic acid, potassium iodide forms the iodonium ion. And the intramolecularly the carboxylate attacks and you get the corresponding iodo lactone. So as I said that iodine is not required because you need only the lactone and not the iodine. So it can be easily removed by treating with tributyl tin hydride and AABN. So before that one should protect the hydroxyl group as acetate. So you protect the hydroxyl group as acetate then treat with tributyl tin hydride you get the lactone. That lactone is called Corace lactone. Okay. This is one of the very important lactone in the total synthesis of uh, prostaglandins. Okay. Other than many people made this lactone by a different method and some people use this lactone and then made prostaglandins but this Corace lactone is well recognized in the total synthesis of prostaglandins. So once you have this now the next step is to elongate one of the side chains. Okay. Next step is to elongate one of the side chains. So you have CH2OME, okay. if you use BBR3, BBR3 is known to cleave OC bond. Okay. So it will cleave the methoxy, okay. you get the corresponding alcohol, CH2OME because it is SN2 displacement, it is easy to cleave methyl. So once you have the CH2OH, next step is to oxidize, so you can oxidize the CH2OH using chromium trioxide, pyridine complex. So you get the corresponding aldehyde. Now you can do the wordsworth immons wittig reaction to get the trans double bond. Okay. Now the trans double bond is fixed. Okay. What is the next step? You have to reduce the ketone. Okay. You have to reduce the ketone in the presence of acetate and lactone. So zinc borohydride successfully can reduce the ketone particularly the alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So it initially, initially you could reduce it to the corresponding allylic alcohol but what he got was mixture. Later he developed uh, you know other reagents for example CBS reagent, Kore Bakshi Sibata reagent to get exclusively only one isomer. Okay. Lot of chemistry was developed uh, using the prostaglandin total synthesis project. Then the acetate to be removed. Why acetate should be removed? The next step should be to attach the second side chain, isn't it? So second side chain means you have to reduce lactone to lactol, then do the VT. But the problem is if you reduce with the dibol, if you reduce with the dibol, not only the lactone will be reduced, but acetate also will be hydrolyzed. Okay, not only the lactone will be reduced, acetate also will be hydrolyzed. So you have to hydrolyze the acetate to get the diol and reprotect that. Now you protect the hydroxyl group, both hydroxyl groups as THP ether. Though THP ether is not a good protecting group for the simple reason that the THP will give additional chiral center. See THP is nothing but okay. You can see it will create additional chiral center. Okay. But if you are using for one or two steps, it is okay. But for a longer sequence, do not use THP. Okay. So now after protecting this as THP, 
next is to reduce the lactone to lactal ok. So, that was easy to get the lactal once you have the lactal the lactal is nothing but your aldehyde and OH is not it. Lactal is nothing but aldehyde and the hydroxyl group then you can do the Wittig ok. The simple standard Wittig when you do on this lactal you get the corresponding cis alkyl. So, now you see we have already introduced the trans double bond now we have introduced successfully the cis double bond. So, what is left in the synthesis of PGE2 alpha and PGF2 alpha 2 means 2 double bonds are already there ok. E one has ketone F both are hydroxyl group. If you remove the THP if you remove the THP then you get directly PGF2 alpha. So, that was done with it acetic acid water you take this compound treat with acetic acetic acid water at about little bit higher ambient temperature you get PGF2 alpha ok. Now, you want one of the hydroxyl group to be oxidized one of the hydroxyl group to be oxidized to ketone, but it will be very difficult to oxidize one of them ok. So, how do you do before you remove the THP not this one this one to be oxidized before you remove the THP oxidize the hydroxyl to ketone ok. Before you remove the THP oxidize the hydroxyl group to ketone then in the second step you remove both THP. So, that will give you PGE2 alpha ok. So, from the same intermediate that is chorase lactone one can easily make PGE2 alpha PGF2 alpha. This is not a chiral one this is a racemic one and for the chiral one what he has done is here a chiral Diels-Alt reaction yeah, asymmetric Diels-Alt reaction he has done followed by uh, even the reduction of ketone to alcohol he has used CBS reduction to get only one isomer. I will discuss that how he has done asymmetric version of uh, prostaglandin in the next class and I also will talk about uh, uh, Gilbert Stark's total synthesis of uh, prostaglandins using a very interesting radical cyclization as the key step ok. Thank you.